Let's say you're given the job of taking this string and separating out the integers from the operators. So what we want to do is we want to create two lists. And in one list, we want to put all the integer components. And in the other list, we want to put the multiplication, addition, subtraction, and division operators. How would we do this? <clears throat> well, one thing we could do is we could take advantage of this integer parse int method that is provided as a static method to the integer class to help us sort through which items are integers or not. So for example, if I have a string version of 1, 2, 3, I could convert that into an integer like this. And uh, let me just print this out for you so you can see it work. There, you can see that that works fine. The problem with this approach, though, is that if we introduce an illegal character here, uh, uh, illegal in terms of not being a, a numerical digit, uh, you'll see that this thing is now going to throw an exception. Let's try that out. And you can see here we have a number format exception. So how can we try and do this sorting if we don't know ahead of time if each of the tokens in here is going to be a number or an operand? Well, we can make an unconventional use of the try-catch block, and that's what we're going to demonstrate in this video here. So let me start off by taking this expression and splitting it. You notice that the single space is conveniently provided as a delimiter here. So I can use the string split method built in Java to separate each of the tokens out. So let me start by doing that. And I'll tell Java that the single space is the token. Now that I've got my tokens separated, I'm going to create the two lists that are going to hold our answers. All right, let me just make sure I type that all in correctly. All right, so we have our two, we have our uh, expression split, and now we've got these two lists that are going to hold our answers. <clears throat> and what we can do is we can uh, make unconventional use of the try catch block here. So I'm going to go through this list here in a for each loop, um, and uh, I'm going to use a try catch block for each item. Now, when I try to do this conversion, if everything goes right and no exception is thrown, I'm simply going to add it to the arguments list. This is the one that contains the integers. But in case I get some sort of exception, I'm going to add it to the other list instead. And then when it's, I'm all done with this, run this now. And you can see that the integers have been put into one list while the operators have been put into the other. OK, we're going to demonstrate a more complicated, more sophisticated example now. We're going to use a similar technique to parse this group of potential social security numbers to try to figure out which ones are properly formatted and which ones are not. So let's say we have this list already inside of an array of these strings that are potential social security numbers. And you can see we've got items here that are perfectly good social security numbers and then other ones that uh, are not because of some issue here. You see you have an illegal character. Here you can see that the first grouping doesn't have three digits. Here you can see the second grouping has too many digits. Here we're missing the third field entirely. So what we want to do is we want to go through this and figure out which ones are good and which ones are bad. And we can do this efficiently using a try-catch block. Here I've created two lists to hold the good and the bad social security numbers. Just like we did in the previous example, I'm using a for loop with a try-catch block inside. What's different this time, though, is, well, a couple of things. First, the delimiter, obviously, is a hyphen instead of a space. But you notice that here, unlike in the previous example, I am on some occasions manually throwing the exception. And, and the advantage of doing this is that in addition to the automatic exceptions thrown, if I parse uh, the token and it's got a bad digit in it, uh, by throwing these exceptions, uh, I can also identify other issues 
other formatting issues like uh, if it's missing a field or has the wrong number of characters or digits. I can funnel all the bad social security numbers through this one catch block and put them all into the bad list. So I don't have to write separate code for any of that. So you can see that the resulting code here is nice and tight and not a lot of code to write. So let me just go through the list with you of issues that we pick up. First of all, when we split this token, uh, so when we split each of these strings into tokens, we want to make sure we end up with three fields. If we don't, for example, in this situation here where an entire field is missing, we want to put that in the bad list. So that's basically what this if statement is doing. And then these three if statements are just checking to make sure that the lengths of digits here are three, two, four, which is the only valid format for a social security number here we might get an exception if there's an illegal digit or there's some other issue and that also is going to put the resulting uh, item into the bad list. Let's run this and show you that this works really well and you can see that the two good social security numbers let me just show you them side by side here you can see that the two good ones this one here and this one here made it to the good list and all the other ones are in the bad list.